Alright. Use the truck today. So today we're gonna uh pick up my neighbor's uh trailer. It's a pretty new trailer. I think it's like a 17 uh outback. And it needs a new roof already. And this is a strange one that I think is becoming more and more common. Uh, let's take a look at it. Now, I've agreed to uh, pick it up because their truck is currently out of town. And uh, I'm a nice guy. So here it is. You'll notice the... Uh, the new roof that they've temporarily put on. What are we calling this? I'm sorry, this is a 2015 Outback. But this should not need a new roof already. So I'm gonna take this entire tarp off, hook up, and we'll get it down to the shop. Uh, this could take a while. Ha, nice. I am not a shipbuilder or a sailor. All right, let's get past this part. My, my neighbors, the owners of this Outback, they ain't taking it out. They actually bought this thing way over in Montana and drove it all the way across country. So it's definitely got some miles on it. And they've taken it out a few times and I guess the last time they went out on their way back home they had somebody flagging them down and saying hey your roof's flopping all over the place because it had finally ripped luckily it was at the end of their trip so their trip wasn't uh, ruined uh, they came home and uh, put a tarp on it then I asked me what was going on I climbed up on the roof as a TPO roof and sure enough, I mean, most of the roof's just gone because they had to cut it off so they could drive down the road. <laughs> and you can see on the front where the, uh, the roof itself had been pulling away from the, uh, the front cap area. And I'm concerned that there's a lot of RVs like this out there that nobody knows because how are you gonna check your roof driving down the road unless you're like uh, a lot of the, uh, the bloggers, the YouTube uh, RVers that mount GoPros in weird places as they're driving. I don't think you'll ever know this is happening until it's too late. Uh, a few years ago, I had a uh, almost brand new toy hauler carbon. It was a carbon triple axle, gr grossly huge toy hauler, where the roof had, fall, uh, had to be replaced too because uh, it had torn. Now that was the first time I'd ever seen that. What had happened is the roof actually like bubbled up and ballooned driving down the road and it had torn against the uh, bottom of the AC, the actual me uh, sheet metal of the AC roof had ballooned up. This was a TPO roof and it was on the front cap area. And to be honest, I didn't know it would have caused something like that. And it was the first time I'd seen that. A few weeks ago, I was driving around up north and there's a lot of RVs on the road, obviously. I've been seeing this a lot more now that I'm ta uh, taking a look at it. Where the, uh, the the roofs of some of these brand new RVs seem to be bubbling or ballooning driving down the road. So I've called the manufacturer and talked to the tech and support hotline to say, hey, are you guys familiar with uh, any of these problems? And I was assured that, oh no, 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 no. No problems like that whatsoever. This is, this is not a problem. They've never even heard of this, which I, I can't believe is true because I, I've ran into it three times now and I'm just one guy. I've talked to a few other uh, RV guys and they've said, yeah, they've seen this too. So I think this is something of a plague that might be facing the RV industry that nobody knows about because nobody's driving them with a camera on them. I think it's just limited to TPO roofs. And I think it's the TPO roof that's kind of the problem. And I think it's because of the way the manufacturers are installing them. And I think I'm going to try to explain it to you. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and get this down to the shop and I have to give the insurance company because that's another shame thing that happened is they bought this, got insurance on it, and four or five days later, the roof falls apart. And of course the insurance company is like, yeah, sure, right, whatever, pal, you bought it like that. But they did not buy it like this. There's no doubt in my mind. So let's get to the shop. All right, guys, we made it there. And uh, I don't know if you can see the torn roof right there. That's what we're looking at. Let's take a look. So this is a TPO roof. It's a tan color or sand color. So it's maybe five years old and uh, it is not in good shape. So here's the big reveal. You can see they uh, Took some time and taped it down where they could. And this is pretty much just glue on wood. You can see right there, that's just backing for where the TV was antenna was mounted. Other than that, it's pretty thin. See my foot going down. Uh, I don't think the decking is the problem. I think a lot of the problem is the curve of this roof. Remember I said TPO doesn't like to make complex curves very well? Well, it's hard to see on camera, but this is a compound curve that curves this way and then also slopes down that way. So I think that might be part of the problem, but I think the other problem is going to be right here. So you can see how, obviously, my big pet peeve is that the... Uh, the membrane's underneath the uh, front cap, and I understand why they do that, but it doesn't look particularly loose. But you can see how this has been stretched. So like, when it was going down the road, this was pulling up so much that it was able to actually stretch out. And the only way I can think that a low pressure above the roof, obviously, we create a vacuum, but it's got to be getting air in underneath. Otherwise, it's like a, a, t a wet t-shirt, you know? You, you can't pull it away until it gets air. It just stretches. So I think having the rubber membrane underneath that front cap is actually pushing air underneath the roof, causing a low pressure also. And so it just keeps feeding back into itself. And that's what I'm coming up with, because underneath here is just a loose flap. And I think that's what's going on, is uh, air is getting under the front cap and underneath the roof. And then it's just time and pressure. And down under here at the front cap, this is how it was made from the factory. You can see this... Uh, Darko material and the underlayment. They didn't really finish off that front cap. I can put my my hand into the front cap. Isn't that weird? So it's not even like sealed off. That's a direct shot into the front cap right there. So I don't know if I need to come up with some sort of a redesign on the sheet metal. Or what? But even right here, the whole thing moves really easily. It's very surprising to me. I built a number of trailers and I can't imagine doing that to somebody. I'm gonna show you one more thing. So very likely, the biggest problem is gonna be, it's kinda hard to see. You can see how this rubber roof has actually been engaging on the sheet metal right here. So it had been pulling up just like that. You can kind of see where it was rubbing the entire time. Well, for a while here. So if you get on your roof and you have a nice black mark or what looks like to be a, a pressure or a puncture mark, your roof is loose. And it's really common on these uh, Coleman's because Coleman's got a, a 
a harder edge than a uh, Dometic. I'm not sure about the Furion or the uh, Atwoods. But even right there, you can see it's a perfect cut. Right on that, uh, on that mark there. So I'm not an engineer. I have to play one sometimes. I'm thinking the best repair on this one's gonna be an actual rubber roof, uh, e EDPM, whatever they wanna call it. That does curves a lot better. Uh, <laughs> we can stretch it a lot better. And then obviously we don't tuck it into that front cap. But uh, I'm mostly gonna put this video out because I don't think I'm gonna show the entire process on this roof job because I don't know how many videos I have on rubber roofs and TPO roofs, but I'm more concerned about hearing back from anybody else if they've been running into this problem or they've seen it driving down the road too. So what I'm hoping is uh, when we put the roof on and the rubber goes over the top of that rail and we screw down, we'll be actually be uh, creating a better airtight gasket crimping that rubber material back on. So I think accidentally how I do them, the rubber roofs, should actually keep this from happening. Instead of tucking it inside the cap, go over the top, drape it over the top, put the molding down, and then cutting off the excess. I got to note that it ended up there. The seal don't look fine. I didn't see any signs of damage, obviously, in the torn roof, but you can see the deck itself wasn't damaged. Uh, no signs of neglect. Maintenance was upkeep, so this is not anybody's fault other than either uh, a materials engineer or the uh, manufacturer and designer. Well, so there you have it, guys. That's a uh, 2015 Outback. Uh, call it a 220 TRB. Woo! So luckily, it's not a huge roof, so it should be pretty easy to do. Like I said, I probably won't make a video doing the roof, maybe the after effect, but it gets me a little concerned because how do I know I've solved the problem without taking this thing on a big test drive after I replace an entire roof? It's why the engineers are supposed to engineer this. I'm just supposed to do the fixes. Uh, so let me know what you guys think. If there's any RV techs watching and they, they have any experience in this, I'm willing to listen to any uh, input before I start working on this thing. But I mean, look at that. It's not even squatting my truck. I know it's not the biggest trailer in the world, but I should have done some compression there. It's just straight as an arrow still. Let me get this thing unloaded and we'll see if it changes any. You guys see any movement there? Thanks for watching.